and welcome to the most special edition of Indianomics that we can ever put up uh, in a year, the interview with the Reserve Bank Governor, Governor Rajan. Good morning, sir. Thank you very much for joining us morning. today. Morning. Morning. Well, uh, it's a great morning to have an interview with you. Uh, Moody's has uh, upped the outlook on India rating. Mm -hmm. uh, do you see this as a first step to a rating upgrade at all? Well, presumably they see it as a, as a step towards... Uh, reconsidering our rating but you know we uh, when they downgrade us we claim not to be very uh, sort of focused on these ratings so I think we should be equally um, sort of uh, what is it? we Unperturbed. should display equanimity <laughs> at such times no, the real issue is uh, I think this is uh, uh, you know a, a, a positive perception of all that has been done mm -hmm in the uh, last few quarters mm -hmm. but I think going forward there's so much that we need to do and so we shouldn't uh, you know lose sight of uh, of the work that remains I've always said we have a lot of low-hanging fruits to pick in India and the tragedy is we haven't actually picked them so let's go about and pick them quickly okay well just a word more you know even they point out that uh, this is only the first step and uh, uh, India still remains an outlier in terms of fiscal deficit. In that context, I didn't see too much of a mention of fiscal deficit in your latest monetary policy statement. Since the March 4th statement, the state deficits, some of the state budgets uh, are known. And uh, how have you evaluated the deficit number? It doesn't seem to have gone down. Well, um, two things. One, I think the quality of spending is important. Um, the state of the economy is weak. And high quality public spending can be a good thing in such circumstances. But the the line that is there in the in the in the statement is some is about repurposing uh, spending from uh, misdirected subsidies towards high quality uh, uh, mm. you know investment. And I think that'll be good for the supply side in the in the longer term. And I think we should see look for that also in state spending. It's not just the deficit number, but it's what they're spending on. Now, of course, there's some talk, oh, it's not about investment, it's about other kinds of spending, but we have to see. The other thing we have to remember is that any kind of spending, uh, if it's in new directions, takes time to ramp up. Mm -hmm. So investment spending has been sort of subdued over the last few years. So even public investment spending will take time to ramp up. Actually, uh, some calculations indicate that this year is actually a fiscal expansionary year, net of asset sales uh, especially, and even without that, it's a 0.1% yes. higher uh, so fiscal expansion over yes. previous year. It doesn't worry you? Well, you know, would I be happier with uh, more fiscal consolidation? Of course, uh, from, a, from a fairly narrow monetary policy perspective, yes, I would be. But, you know, these are calculations that... Uh, that the government makes taking into account the various demands including uh, what it needs to do to get investment up and going so uh, we have to uh, work with with uh, with the reality there has been a substantial number of good measures medium term measures that have been put into place in the budget and there is a fiscal consolidation path that is set in place over the medium term so keeping that in mind we have to work with uh, with the space we have okay let me come to the other big caveat that you always have for rate cuts, uh, inflation. Mm -hmm. uh, we've moved away from double digits to uh, just a little north of 5%. Mm. How much of this is structural or secular? How much of this is just because we are lucky, cyclical, you know, uh, so, lower prices? Uh, you know, uh, what, what was it Lincoln said about the general who, who was drunk most of the time and he said, I wish my other generals found the brand of whiskey and drank that <laughs> okay. uh, the, you know if it's luck uh, the main thing is does it bring the economy to a different level Has in it. terms of expectations in terms of uh, demands for wage increases etc etc so uh, when you were at double digit inflation yes we needed a little bit of luck mm -hmm so as to um, sort of dis-anchor uh, or mm -hmm. unanchor inflationary mm -hmm. expectations. Now that inflation is, is lower, mm -hmm. and if people see it coming off their, the items that are most uh, 
sort of salient to them, things like uh, vegetables, things like milk, things like petrol. Mm. If they see inflation there coming down, then their perceptions come down. And as their perceptions come down, then the demand for double-digit wage hikes, etc., also come down. So hopefully, we've at least accomplished the first part of that, which is the salient items are perhaps less expensive today uh, than, uh, or than would have been true if, if the previous rate of inflation had, had gone on. Mm. Now we have to build on this. Okay. This is why we can't relax our guard quickly. Uh, we cannot say that we are out of the inflation woods, that this is a time we have to consolidate and ensure that the disinflationary uh, perception mm. is entrenched. But have you seen any victory at all uh, in terms of uh, structurally inflation coming down? No, uh, look, uh, a number of elements are coming down, including the services. So it's yes. not just it's not just not just uh, vegetables. A number of services are also coming down, or at least not going up at the rate that they were going up at. That, to my mind, is a positive development. But we have to build on this. We can't at this point say we're done. And and so it, I I think it's a it's a long drawn out battle. Okay, actually, your inflation expectation survey uh, of March 31. Uh, indicates that household inflation expectations have inched up a smidge. Yes. That is why my question is: it does it look like the disinflation process is over? I don't think th that's the message to take away. I mean, these expectations uh, certainly have built up over a, a long period of time. The extent that vegetable prices started firming up, uh, some of the it is seasonal. Um, also, petrol prices started firming up a little bit. Okay. So given that, uh, I wouldn't be overly uh, worried about a, a notch up in those expectations. But yes, if it starts climbing back up, I would start uh, worrying if this persisted for a, uh, uh, for a reading or two. Okay. You know, uh, if you looked at your uh, uh, real rate, uh, at the moment we are at 5.4 and uh, the repo rate at uh, seven and a half, we are at a two percentage point uh, 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 real rate or real return. At, uh, as of March, we will be at 5.8 and uh, you know, if we continue where we are, then we will actually have a lower real rate. It should it not be the other way around, that you should have a lower real rate when growth is low and as growth picks up, you should have perhaps a higher real rate. So, I mean, isn't there a case to advance the rate cut? <laughs> <laughs> that, I, I, I didn't quite follow the reasoning there, but let me let me. Uh, uh, no, the real rate is higher now, and if inflation went to 5.8, the real rate will be lower in March. Right. Given the same repo. Right. But uh, shouldn't it be the other way around? Growth is weak; it deserves help now. Well, growth is weak, and it deserves help. Uh, that that is a statement that I hear often. Uh, growth is helped by many factors uh, and the interest rate is just one of those factors and of course to the extent that uh, it can be moved uh, based on perceptions of inflation etc it will be moved now um, as far as our projections why are our projections of uh, of um, you know inflation higher down the line in fact they come down mm. and they okay. come down because of what we call base effects right that inflation last year was higher at in you know uh, July August, and as a result, from that reading to August this year, we may look lower, and that's why inflation will come down. Not because over the period the underlying inflation has has been slower, but we're looking through all this, and what we said in the statement is we want more information. What is uh, what is the underlying process of inflation? Now, when people say 5.8 is your forecast, now. I keep saying we're not astrologers, uh, the r good <laughs> astrologer, okay. and we don't know exactly what's going to happen. These are not, uh, you know, perfect focus. These are best estimates. Okay. And as information comes in, we will see how much more room we have or how much less room we have and act accordingly. Now, um, people say, oh, you have no room or you have room. Well, that depends on the, the, the entire set of information that we will make our decision on. And, uh, and I, won't, uh, I won't preclude it to or, uh, you know, say we have gigantic amounts of room. It really depends on the information. But is there at least a, 
uh, you know, a, a downward bias to your 5.8 percent March 2016? I, 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 I'm not sure that you want to put, I th thought we said, and I, if I remember the words, it was equally balanced. Okay. There are upward pressures and there are downward pressures. So our sense is that's about what we would, would, would look at. Now, of course, if oil prices fall significantly further because of Iran, that will be very helpful. If the food management that the government has embarked on in the past year uh, works as successfully as we go into di perhaps more difficult times, then that would also be a, a positive on the, on, the, on the downside. So we have to wait and see. Their upward pressures are obvious. The, the recent uh, disturbances, weather disturbances, will create, again, disturbances on the, on the food price. There's some indication that rural wages may also have stabilized, are not going down uh, as much as they were going down earlier. Yeah. So that may also support wages, and we have to see. Okay. So given these uncertainties, uh, I think more information will help us determine whether we have more room or less room. Okay, well, there are some, uh, ultimately it is higher productivity and higher supply side measures that will be perhaps uh, responsible for structural inflation coming down. Do you see the first steps for that? Or to phrase it the other way around, what is your visibility for that 4% inflation uh, well, in I, 2018? I, I think over time the supply uh, of uh, goods and services will improve in this, in this country. And a number of efforts, the whole, you know, Make in India okay. sort of campaign is in my view uh, primarily a way of increasing the supply mm -hmm. of uh, goods and services. Okay. And I think as that kicks in, well, the immediate part of making India is, is let's get the stall projects going. Yes. Uh, <coughs> let's, uh, and let's create the environment for new, peop new investments to be, uh, to be announced. And, and I think you're seeing some movement on both these dimensions. Stall projects are coming down steadily, perhaps not as fast as everybody wants, but they are coming down. And new projects are uh, being announced in a much bigger way yeah. than earlier. So both these, uh, to my mind, are good developments, and we have to build on them. Uh, Dr. Rajan, just a couple of things more on inflation, more linked to the monetary policy framework that you mm -hmm. have put in place. Now, uh, how much leeway does the framework give you to control inflation? Uh, you know, if there is fiscal expansion, you don't have much of